Uh, our next um, speaker, Mark Bunn. So would you like to enjoy great energy, less stress and understand why the foods, exercise and stress management strategies that are healthy for your partner, friends and colleagues may be disastrous for you? Our next speaker, Mark Bunn, will help to do this through his unique reminders of the ancient, timeless wisdoms of health and happiness. In an earlier life, Mark was an AFL footballer for six years. Unfortunately, his only claim to fame was for being the only footballer never to have been arrested or involved in a drunken nightclub brawl. <laughs> Today, Mark combines his honours degree in Western Health Science with almost 20 years consulting in the Eastern Health Science of Maharishi Ayurveda, plus a decade studying the secrets of the world's healthiest, longest living people. He's the author of the three times best-selling Ancient Wisdoms for Modern Health a trained teacher of Transcendental Meditation and a regular media commentator. Mark's greatest achievement, however, has been in helping address our country's $10 billion sleep deprivation problem. In the first three years as a speaker, 98% of Mark's seminar participants reported that they had the best sleep of their lives. Unfortunately, this was during his talks. <laughs> Please welcome Mr Mark Bunn. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. It is true, unfortunately, but I do have a solution to this. It's called bribery. I'm wondering if there's anyone here today willing to admit for $10 that maybe you've been working a bit too hard lately, you've been to bed late last night, you didn't get enough caffeine this morning, and you think you might fall asleep in the next 50 minutes. Any, yes. What's your name? Thank you very much. Jan, we like honesty. Thank you. I did Minute silence for Jan. Nice. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Is there anyone else here willing to admit for $10 that maybe you did get to bed a reasonable time last night, you didn't work night shift, you haven't been working that hard, you've had a bit of caffeine this morning, but now that you know we're going to talk about your health and well-being and maybe you shouldn't be drinking and eating so many bad things that you'd really rather be asleep for the next 50 minutes. Anyone willing to admit that? Yes, what's your name? Beautiful, we like honesty. Jenny, thank you very much. And is there anyone here for $100 who's so excited that I'm coming to speak to you today that you're not going to be able to sleep for the next week? Yes, what's your name? Carolyn. I just wanted to touch you. Oh. <laughs> I like the bribery, but you're obviously a liar, so you can have an apple, Carolyn. There you go, fantastic. How good was Danielle and Natalie? Seriously, yeah? It is such a joy to come and speak to you for the third time, I must say, and it's for exactly that reason. Most of my weeks speaking to groups, I have to go and talk to lawyers and wank, I mean bankers. <laughs> so it is just so enjoyable to be with you today. Nurses and teachers are my all-time favourite group, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. The other reason I love coming here is because it's in Melbourne and I get a chance to get back into a bit of football fever. I have MCG, big games. It always reminds me of one of the most heartwarming stories that I've ever heard. And it was when I was bringing a friend over from overseas who'd never been to an AFL football game. So I thought, we'll take him to the MCG, big game, Hawthorne are playing Geelong. We get there early, we're outside the ground. And there's these two little kids, about 10 years old, and they're kicking the footy back and forth to each other. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, this huge German shepherd dog comes bounding across Punt Road, runs across the grasslands, dives on one of the little kids and starts mauling him in front of everyone. Within seconds, his mate from 30 metres sees what happens, comes charging over, mid-stride, bends down, picks up a stick from six feet, dives on the dog, wrestles the dog off his mate and beats him off with a stick. Unbeknownst to us, the senior editor of the Herald Sun newspaper sees the whole thing. His eyes light up. He says, what a story this is. Goes up the little kid, he says, mate, what an act of courage and bravery. You literally saved your friend's life. I can just see tomorrow morning's paper, back page of the Herald Sun, half page headline reads... Courageous hawk supporter saves mate from vicious killer dog. Little kid says, I don't beg for Hawthorne. <laughs> he says, oh, how about this? Tomorrow morning's paper, half page headline, back page of the paper reads, courageous cat supporter saves mate from vicious killer dog. Little kid says, I don't beg for Geelong. He says, oh, who do you beg for? Collingwood. <laughs> the next day, Front page of the Herald Sun newspaper. Half page headline reads, Low life mongrel attacks poor innocent family pet. <laughs> we got any Collingwood supporters here today? 
<laughs> oh, it's always good to know how many Collingwood supporters you have in the audience, just so you know how far to lower the tone of the session. So. <laughs> it is good. It is great to be back. Who was here at the 2010 conference? Get a raise of hands. A few. Excellent. Who was here at the 2013 conference? Excellent. Geez, you've aged a bit. No, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. You look fantastic, absolutely fantastic. What we're going to do today, because I know and I always speak with Glenn, what do people want? The evaluation forms every year are the same. Please don't invite that Mark Bun guy back and we have lots of practical strategies. And so that's what we want to do with you today. The first five or ten minutes, we're just going to do a bit of a recap of some of my, what I call, the pillars of health and well-being. So those that have been to sessions before, it's a good little reminder for you because I know you're all getting on a bit now and the memory's not quite... No, <laughs> it's all good. And then we're going to go into something new that we haven't done before. And so as you know with my philosophy and the introductory handed it out or mentioned it, is that my belief is that about 80% of what you hear in modern Western today is either completely wrong or so complicated, confusing and contradictory, it actually stops you from having your highest state of health and well-being that you deserve as a nurse. Do you know how much the longest living cultures and the long-standing traditions of healthcare and the Eastern sciences, do you know how much they know about good fats, bad fats, low-carb diet, glycemic index, antioxidants? As much as Paris Hilton knows about a hard day's work. <laughs> Never heard of them. So I wanted with you today is this first five or ten minutes is just to go through what we call or I call some of the wisdoms, the ancient timeless, eternal wisdoms of health and well-being that I guarantee you if you just take one or two little changes into your routine and I understand how difficult it is, busy nurses just as it is, let alone night shifts and changing shifts, it's difficult. We'll tell you about that in a moment. But those little changes will make far more difference to your health and well-being than following any of the fads out in the Western market today. Okay? Is it a good idea? I know you've been sitting down for a while, so I want to get you into what we call our natural high state right from the start. So I'm going to ask you just to stand on your feet and just turn to the person next to you and say, you are so good looking. Go. <laughs> Excellent. Take a seat. Take a seat. You're not that good looking. So the first thing or the major thing that these long-living healthy cultures do in contrast to our high disease cultures is something they understand as the natural laws or the natural cycles of life. We think about our universe, we have day and night, we have summer and winter, we have things like gravity, eternal immutable laws of nature, boil water, eternal immutable law of nature. It's a fundamental immutable law of nature that if you were born in Victoria, you are three times as intelligent as anyone else in the country. <laughs> hey, woo! Just get a raise of hands who wasn't born in Victoria. <laughs> My apologies, I'll try and talk a bit slower. So, there are fundamental laws of nature, like a surfer riding a wave, cycles that govern our mind, body and emotions. If we live in tune with these cycles, these laws of nature, we naturally have good health, live long life, we're happy, don't age so much. Who feels like they're getting a bit old? Hmm, few. Actually, do you know when you're getting old? You know when you're getting old, when your partner says, darling, come upstairs and make love. You say, pick one, I can't do both. <laughs> so we want to live in tune with these cycles. And one of the most fundamental natural cycles that the ancients and the traditional cultures understood is the cycle of the sun that the cycle of the sun mirrors and reflects and governs many of the cycles in our human body, particularly one of the most important, which is how we digest our food. Because there's no use eating food unless we digest it, which is why the advice you've been hearing for the last decade or two, that breakfast should be the most important meal of your day, is absolute rubbish. Never in the history of the longest living, healthiest cultures have they ever considered breakfast to be the most important meal of the day because they understand when you get up first thing in the morning when you're not on night shift and you go outside, the sun is coming up on the horizon, it's weak in strength. And they'll tell you that the strength of the sun mirrors the di strength of your digestive fire. So a light, easy to digest breakfast. I can hear all of you going, oh, thank God. <laughs> Instead of focusing on the big breakfast, what you want to try and do is to connect to something that we haven't been connecting to so much in the last decade, again to our detriment, and it's called the sun. Soup. 
eventually. The early morning sun. Early morning sunlight through the eyes is absolutely critical. Regulate all your endocrine system. Sleep-wake cycle. If you can't get to sleep when you do go to bed at 10 o'clock if you're on a normal shift, are you getting natural full-spectrum sunlight through your eyes? So important. The other thing it does is it stimulates the neurochemistry of happiness, joy and positivity. I was so happy when I heard about this because I remembered for about five years from the age of 18, every Saturday and Sunday morning, I did this. The only problem was I hadn't been to sleep and I'd just come out of a nightclub. <laughs> the other thing we've disconnected ourselves from is what's underneath our feet, the earth. And what we're now finding, the good early evidence, is that the earth that we live on is one of the single most powerful sources of both anti-inflammation and anti-oxidation. And I'm sure as nurses you're all aware that up to 90% of our Western illnesses, good science is suggesting, something going wrong with this clicker, that should say earth yourself. We need to connect to the earth because what we do is we live in high-rise buildings, we sleep on elevated beds and even when we walk on the ground we wear the best insulators known to mankind, rubber and plastic soled shoes. One of the best things you can do for your health for weekends when you've got a bit of time off is get your shoes and socks off, stand on the ground, sit in the, on the grass, go in the garden. When you go down the beach, don't walk on the pavement with your shoes on, get the shoes off, walk on the soft sand, the wet sand, absolutely powerful. It's called earthing or grounding. A lot of research is coming out and it's really, really powerful. Another thing that traditional cultures do, which of course lived closer to the ground, but is different from us and they're suggesting has a lot to do with our Western health illnesses, is the connection to the midday sun. Because of course they understood that in contrast to us, that when the sun is at its peak in the middle of the day, like all traditional cultures, even France and Italy, if you've been to those cultures, when do they have their main meal of the day? Lunchtime, when the sun is at its peak. When the sun is at its peak, our inner sun, the ancients understood, our digestive fire is also at its peak. It's like this, food comes in, gets digested, absorbed, assimilated, when we need it, energy and vitality, because we're at work, generally speaking, unless we're on night shift. What are we doing? Ah, we're on the computer, getting an admin done. We can't work away. Our keyboard's not working because little bits of rice cake are falling down and wedging in between the keys of our keyboard. We finally get home on a regular shift at 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock at night when the body's natural cycle's slowing down in readiness for sleep and our digestive fire that cooks our food is also slowing down in readiness for sleep, which is, of course, the time that we eat our biggest meal of the day when the digestive fire has gone to sleep. So we wake up heavy, we wake up tired, we haven't rejuvenated from sleep, we put on a few kilograms each and every year unless you've got a metabolism like mine where you eat whatever you want, you never put on weight. Who hates these sort of people? Yeah. <laughs> I was having dinner with a metabolic scientist the other week. I said, how come you guys always come up with these fancy technical terms of people that put on weight easily? Hypometabolizes, endomorphs. How come there's no scientific technical term for people like me who eat whatever they want and never put on weight? He says there is. Absolute bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so, we want to lighten up the evening meal. It will absolutely transform your life. As the sun sets and the digestive power goes down, you will be amazed. Easy, lighter, easily digested meals will transform your life. Improve your sleep, you'll wake up fresher, you'll be more motivated to exercise every area of your life will be improved. And the final one we just want to touch on is this idea of also compromising our digestive fire through our Western habit that many of us do of drinking ice-cold drinks. What does an ice-cold drink do to a digestive fire? It puts it out. So we go to our restaurant, we want to digest our food, we swig back on a big ice cup of ice cold water before we're about to eat our meal. If we eat good quality food, it doesn't get digested. Which is why traditional cultures, and you go to a Chinese restaurant or an Asian restaurant, what do they put on the middle of your table? Tea, green tea, ginger water. So we had a garden hose here, which I just happened to have, which represents the gastrointestinal tact tract, which you're all very familiar with. If we put a garden hose in a cup of hot water rather than the ice cold water, what happens to the hose? 
gets soft and malleable and pliable. Any gunk on the inside of a hose, instead of getting stuck to the side of the hose, gets softened. You turn the tap on and all the impurities, the waste, the toxins get taken out of our body, which is how our body is designed to function as ancient cultures understood. And we detox and we lose weight every single day instead of putting on more weight. So this Western habit, this is a little shift work thing that we'll come back to if you need more resources on how it works with shift work. Our Western habit of drinking ice cold drinks we want to get out of. To show you how powerful it was, a lady wrote to me about 12 months ago. She came to a seminar. She said, Mark, I've been drinking ice cold water for 42 years. I said, send me a photograph, which she did. As you can see, massive arthritis in the wrist joint, couldn't straighten her middle finger, couldn't bend any of the other digits. I said, go for a six-week program. Warm to hot water, a couple of slices of fresh ginger, which will help stimulate your digestion, help process impurities out of the joints. Send me a photo in six weeks. Let me know how you got on with it. (laughs) Absolutely remarkable. But these little ancient wisdoms, they don't take any time out of your day. They don't cost you anything but they're just based on the natural laws, the simple, basic wisdoms of life, rather than getting caught up with counting calories and analysing fats that'll just do your head and it'll add to your stress and you still won't lose weight and feel any better. Simple, simple stuff. That's all we're going to cover today in terms of that recap session. We're going to offer you, there's a book, the book that has all that stuff in it. We're going to give you really cheap as cheap price if you want to get into all that information. But today, the next step, we actually want to go into some new information because these are natural universal laws of nature. What we're going to discuss today is how you can understand your individual laws of nature. Why, when a friend tells you about this great new diet that she's just been on, and she's lost weight, she's sleeping better, and she feels fantastic, that all you experience is bloating and you're farting all week. (laughs) Some exercise program comes out, some people love it. Some people don't get many results, and other people sore joints, and they can't sleep. Oh, why are you not doing that again? because we are all different. But in Western health science, we don't understand why that is. So we're going to look at something I was formally trained in today called Maharishi Ayurveda, the world's oldest system of healthcare, thousands and thousands of years old, time-tested, and it understands how we can understand our unique nature and therefore what foods, exercise, stress management techniques are right for us. So when the CSIRO or the Health Foundation or some great author brings out some great book or diet book or exercise that works for one third of the population, average for the other third of the population, and actually is no good for the other third of the population, you'll actually understand why that is. Okay? But to do that, we're going to go through about three minutes of bit sort of intellectual stuff. So I want to really get your brains working. So if I'm going to ask you again to just stand up on your feet, turn to the person next to you and say, you are the most intelligent person I have ever seen. Excellent. Take a seat. Wonderful. All right, here we go. We're going to fly through this. So the idea of this is just to get the concept. We're going to give you a resource at the end that you can get all the information and go through it in detail and work out what works for you. This next 20 minutes is just a bit of fun. Get the concept that we're all different and how we're different, okay? Don't get too into it. Don't worry about the Vedic words. Okay, just get the concept. So everything in our universe is basically composed of five elements. Space, air, fire, water and earth. We put space and air together, we get a governing principle that we call vata, or we're going to call it the airy principle. Okay, it governs everything to do with movement and communication. If we put fire and a little bit of water together, the principle we get is we could call it the fiery principle or Pitta principle. It governs everything to do with transformation and energy. Okay? And then when we put water and a little bit of earth together, we get the earthy principle or what we could call kapha in Ayurvedic terminology. It governs all the structure and lubrication. Okay? So, let's have a look a little bit more detail. If you put space and air together, you've basically got something like the wind, yes? And we all know the wind has certain qualities, doesn't it? It's cold, it's dry, it's subtle, gets under the door, it's moved, changed. If you're in Melbourne, the wind comes from one direction, five minutes later it's coming from another direction. It's changeable, it's always moving, it's quick, it's cold, it's dry. So in the body, 
the functions that Vata or this area principle governs is everything to do with movement, communication, okay, so blood flow, nervous system, thinking, speaking, elimination, menstruation. The fire principle, of course, has qualities related to heat, intensity, sharpness. So in the body, that heat is what transforms things, food into energy, water into vapour, okay? English backpackers into start raiding lunatics. Heat, digestion, metabolism, emotions, that passion, skin, liver, eyesight, intellect, all governed by this fiery or pitta principle. The earthy principle or kapha, heavy, slow. Put some soil and a bit of water in your back garden, go away for a few days, come back, it's still there. Solid, heavy, we call it unctuous or oily. Sweet little kids often they say they eat the dirt because it's got a sweetness to it. Okay. In the body, it's of course the structure, the lubrication of joints, the muscles, the bones, the physical hard structure. Now, of course, we look around the room and we all know within our families and our friends that we're all different. Now, we're all composed of some structure, we're all composed of some transformation quality and we're all composed of things that move. So we all have all three principles in us but the proportion of those differs for all of us. And this is what gives us our unique nature. Some are more airy, some are more fiery and of course some are more earthy. Now this is not the time of the session to turn to the person next to you and say, oh this is going to explain why you're a real airhead. And please don't go home tonight and tell your partner, I've just learned today why you're so annoying. <laughs> but it will explain all of that, trust me. Okay? So we're all different and we're going to go through how it is and find out why that might be for you and the friends and the people you work with and then how you can maybe get that into balance. And to do that, it's my great pleasure to bring on stage a very, very dear friend of mine, a colleague, who now lives in America. She is Australian, but she was here for a few weeks, so I thought, let's take the chance, get her up. Here she comes, even before the introduction. I was going to tell you how fantastic she was, but she doesn't want an introduction, so here she is. This is Helen Toomey, everybody. Could you please put your hands together for dear Helen? Now, I do call her a colleague, but she is like an elder, bigger sister. I already have the most fantastic bigger sister in the world ever but now I've got another one. And as you can see, even though I called her elder bigger sister, she is a couple of years younger than me and a couple of feet shorter. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, and I'm just so privileged to be in front of the most remarkable community here. You are the strongest, most dedicated, most compassionate. The degree of nourishment which you give to everyone is so extraordinary, so laudable. Could you please, instead of applauding me, give yourself an applause right now. Beautiful, beautiful. So what Helen and I are going to do is just take you through what we call the balanced state of these three predominant types. Now, we're all composed of all three, so don't think you're just one and not the other. Okay, but as we go through, as we said, just get the general idea of it. So first we're going to have a look at what we call balanced airy or vatas. Okay, and these, because they're composed of space and air, generally have a very light build, very slim, very petite. Gee, you did that quickly. I did. <laughs> <laughs> they're very quick thinking, so they cook very quick, they talk a lot, you know, they're quick to do things, come up with great ideas, they often make very good dancers or ballerinas or artists, musicians, they've got that creative side. Okay, when they're in balance, they have very good appetite and good bowel function. Do you want to not demonstrate? Now. Not now. <laughs> not now. Now, Helen, we know that no one in this audience would be out of balance in terms of the airy principle. But what about their friends and family? How would they get out of how would people get out of balance, these sort of people? What would they do? Very simple. They'd have too, not enough hydration, very, very important. Too much icy cold water, which we've just learned to mark how important this is. Too much cold, dry food actually too much exercise, too much activity, too much noise, not taking some downtime, too much movement, because let's face it, that's what Vata is, movement. So you need the opposite. Beautiful. And Helen, how would we maybe recognise, not in ourselves of course, of course, but maybe the people we work with or the people here, the family, how would they recognise this behaviour in, in their families? Or 
Well, very, very see. simple. Think about anxiety. Think about worries. Think about speaking at five million miles an hour. And the thing is, is this, I don't know why I'm worried and I don't know why I'm anxious and I don't know the fact that I can't really find my glasses because I've got to get to work <laughs> in a few minutes. Can you help me? Where are my glasses? Does anyone know where my glasses are? What actually is my name? I'm very anxious. I'm, I, I'm all of them. Do you know? Where are my keys? Oh, keys? Um, I don't know. Um, well, I can't find them because they're glasses. <laughs> Does anyone know where my glasses are? Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. So Vata out of balance. This is behaviour. What about more health conditions? Too much space, too much air, too much dryness. How are we going to see that in the body? Well, maybe lightweight, lightheaded, spacey. We talk to these people and say, oh, Jenny, she's just an airhead. Oh, Tommy's away with the fairies. Okay, it's in our language. Okay, so things don't stick. Memory, not so good. Get anxious and worried. So when these people get stressed, it's bite the nails. You know, can't sleep. Insomnia. Can't settle down the mind. Constipation, gas. No coincidence that the word vat rhymes with. <laughs> oh, you're naughty. <laughs> Insomnia, quick to fatigue, quick to start things, but quick to get tired. Okay, dry or rough skin, joints, pain, arthritis. So what do we do? What will we do, Helen? One or two quick tips for people that may be feeling a few of these symptoms on the screen. What could they do to maybe get themselves back into balance? Again, the exact opposite of that. Because it's regarding movement, we actually need to sip warm water. We need to have warm, freshly cooked food. We need, especially, say, in the cold, dry winter of Melbourne, we need to keep warm. We need to recognise the fact that we need rest. We don't need to keep doing everything to the max. Because our minds, when Vata is imbalanced, it's like a washing machine on a maximum spin. It never, ever stops. So we take that time to honour ourselves, have some silence, do transcendental meditation, for example, as Mark and I have done for probably 300 years. Three without months. exaggerating, of course. Take the silence, there you are. In terms of food, one or two really quick things. The exact opposite of what you're told to eat in a Western health diet is perfect for these people. If these people do not have any salt in their diet, have no sweetness, have no oil or fat, and eat a lot of raw food, I guarantee you within a few weeks they'll be having either headaches or migraines, they won't be able to sleep, they'll get joint pains, they'll be irritable, because these foods ground these people. They nourish the nervous system, they're more satisfying, and they make them feel so much better. What about Pitta, the fiery types? When they're in balance, we call them the fiery types. Pitters, but when they're balanced, they have more medium build, very good intellect, sharp intellect, sharp mind. They're very often competitive, very focused. They get a lot done. They're the people you give jobs to when you want something done. They're fiery. Strong digestion, good emotionals, very passionate about causes and events. Okay? They often make very good sort of athletic or sporty type people or business people, people that get a lot done. But Helen, what might these people do that get them out of balance and maybe a little bit hot under the collar. Alcohol and hot spicy food. Doing exercise. You've ever known Peter so competitive? There they are in noon in boiling hot summer and they're out there running 15 kilometres <laughs> as if they haven't got enough to do. And at the same time, that thing about always time element. I don't have any time. The, the fact that they don't take... Uh, time to have walk and nature, to have some rest time, some downtime to be good to themselves. Those types of things. Beautiful. So if they do get a little bit hot under the collar, how might this, how might we recognise this in their behaviour? What would they be like? Think tigress. Think lioness. Think of the fact that we've got a volcano just about <laughs> to erupt. Does anyone identify with this, with your friends or colleagues? There's a fury, there's an anger, there's frustration, you're going to tear your hair out. That is Peter out of balance. And also the blame game, you know, the fact that control thing. I told you what to do. I told you what not to do. This isn't good enough. I'm not going to tolerate this. That type of thing is Peter out of balance. And also emotion. Pitta out of balance also can be an ocean of motions and emotions and notions. Beautiful. So how we see it in the body? Anger, impatience. Okay. He, too much heat in the body. How does that express? Things like acid stomach, reflux, ulcers, 
Pitters are the type of people that get ulcers more likely and also the type of people that give other people ulcers, okay? <laughs> Very demanding, perfectionist, okay? Too competitive, deadlines, critical of themselves and others. Very prone to skin condition, rashes, liver and eye problems and heart problems, the typical type A problems. So if they're prone to too much heat naturally in their body, how do you think they go going to the Mexican restaurant or the Indian restaurant having competitions with their friends about who can eat the hottest chilies? Disastrous. But what we don't understand, because we're told that certain foods are healthy and certain foods aren't, we don't understand what foods do in terms of heating and cooling the body. So some foods that you might eat, or friends of yours with these problems might eat, thinking they're perfectly healthy, are things like fish and tomatoes. In Ayurveda, we understand that fish is one of the single most heating foods in the body. Helen could stand here for half an hour and tell about clients she's seen where all she's done is taken them off fish and skin rashes have cleared up, temper has come down, they've felt so much better. Tomatoes, the same. Acid foods, sour foods, these types of things. And what can cool the body very quickly? One example, coconuts. Coconut products are extremely cooling. So you get these people to have more coconut products. If they won't take them, you just smash them over the head with the coconut. Okay? <laughs> Helen, what's maybe a behavioural tip or two for these people, how they might cool themselves down? Instead of going out and exercising 15, 30 kilometres in the midday sun, things such as swimming. It's obvious. They're overheated. And therefore, we do the opposite. So something more cooling, cooling exercise, more rest, more fun, walking in nature, uh, cooler foods, uh, sipping water that would maybe room temperature, and obviously avoiding hot, spicy foods at all, all odds. Nothing hot and spicy. Beautiful. And so we mentioned one of these first qualities of these people is impatience. And if people don't get this fiery principle under control, they generally run into someone who will give them a life lesson about impatience. Let's look at a little video for you now just to sort of embed this in your mind. Absolutely beautiful. What you didn't hear on the video, there's these two young skateboarders that you usually see at the start of the video and they're just laughing their heads off at this. Absolutely beautiful. So let's have a look at our dear kapha or earthy types. Now it's very important that we stay here right at the start that in Ayurveda they see people with a bigger, more cuddly body type as absolutely perfect for their nature. The idea that these people should go on diets and try and look like stick insect models that aren't allowed to smile ever in their life is absolutely disastrous. It's a societal pressure that we could really do without. For these people, cuffers when they are in balance, the earthy types, which most nurses naturally have a fair degree of that cuffer nature, might not be physically, but mentally and emotionally, because cuffer is related to the care element, the support element like the earth, that nourishing, nurturing element. But physically, kapha is generally the tendency towards put on a little bit of weight. Look at a bit of chocolate, I put on two kilograms. Okay? But very sweet-natured, down-to-earth, reliable, dependable, slow to get new information and to pick things up, but once they get it, never forget. Elephant memory. Be really careful if you go out with a cuffer dominated person because you'll get into an argument and they'll say, 25 years ago and when we were here, you said. <laughs> Nurses, caregivers, teachers, support people often have this beautiful kapha element which the vatas and the pittas, the aries and the fairies love because it grounds the vatas, which is why if you come home and you've got a vata person who's out of control and spacey and airy, one of the best things you can do, rather than talking to them and telling them it's going to be all right, you just come up and you give them the a nice big hug. hug. Which you're so good at. You're not bad either. Thank you. Now, Helen, we know that no one again in this room would have an earthy imbalance, but what about people? What would they do that maybe 
leads to having too much of this element and causing problems in their life? What would they do? What they would do is, is the fact that they would not do any exercise. Too much sitting, not doing exercise, too much heavy, oily, rich, sweet foods, which they naturally are attracted to, but is the worst thing for them, because they already have that wonderful, sweet quality to them that's substantial of earth, but this is a disaster. And then also, uh, perhaps not uh, trying new things, initiating new things. They need more stimulation. So perhaps a repetitive work with no challenge to them and putting on weight, these types of things out of balance, then really and truly results in problem. Okay, so they get a little bit stuck in the mud, we might stuck say. Stuck in the mud exactly. and stuck in the chocolate cake. <laughs> and so how might this reflect? How might we see this in their behaviour? What's a couple of examples? Well, let's think about this. Here I am. <laughs> I'm on the couch. I have my rabbit because I'm compassionate and gorgeous. And then, of course, is the fact that you asked me to do something. Asked me to do something. Helen, can you please do something for me? I just don't feel motivated. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm, I, I really want to watch television. Mm. I just want to watch Days of Our Lives. <laughs> it's just too hard, Mark. <laughs> And I'm getting so much exercise. I've got the slimmest wrist. I've been, surf, <laughs> I've been ch surf channeling for just years and I'm just, I can't go any further. I'm just going to have a little bit of a snack <laughs> before I start my next diet next week. Mm. Maybe. You get the picture? Fantastic. And so, if we want to get these people to help them to get back into balance... These are the sort of people who our Western diet recommendations are perfect for. These are the sort of people that do want to lighten up the diet, the traditional things you've heard. But what you may not appreciate, and what we're just starting to get a bit more information on now, for these people what's absolutely critical and is fantastic, rather than focusing so much on things like exercise to stimulate metabolism and get the body going, which is hard work when you don't feel like it, you're down and you're a little bit heavy and you're depressed because these people are the ones that do have a bit more tendency towards heavy emotions, get heavy on themselves, depression, obviously, as we said, put on weight more easily, more prone to diabetes, okay, congestion, blockages, sinuses, metabolic all that sort syndrome. of thing. Yeah, metabolic syndrome, okay. Joint problems, they retain fluid more easily, all that sort of thing. So for these people in terms of diet, the one key thing I want to give to you is to increase... Spice. Ginger, turmeric, black pepper, chili. Ginger, turmeric, black pepper, chili. Ginger, turmeric, black pepper, chili. Can't we put some cumin in there? Cumin in there too. Go for your life. More the merrier for these people because it stimulates. You can stimulate your metabolism more with the right spicing in food many times than the most vigorous exercise in terms of long term changes. So, one simple tip. Increase the spice, not just in the food, but in your life generally if you can. And this will generally get you back more into balance. To increase your digestive fire or agni. <sighs> increase the heat, get the fire going, get that mucus, get all that out of the body. So, Helen, it's been fantastic to have you up here. Before you depart, though, I'm wondering if you could give us maybe your one best tip. People in the audience, as we said, it's just a very quick overview today. Some people may still be a bit confused whether I'm Vada, Pitta or Kapha or all three out of balance. What would you say is your one best tip for nurses, midwives, busy, busy people, lots to do, changing routines? What can we do? One final tip to stay in balance. What would you say? Out of all the three doshas, and again, for many of this, you, this is very, very new knowledge, the most important of those do doshas is Vata. It's considered to be king of the doshas. Because it governs movement, as Mark said, respiration and digestion and uh, the whole bloodstream, heart, all these different things, as well as the brain and the nervous system, it's the one dosha that we really need to keep in balance. So I understand that you're nurses and there is daily routine, can sometimes be an issue, but as much as possible, honour and try to balance that vata. As we've given some suggestions here, Best that you can in the daily routine, 
whatever you do, never be having freezing cold water for digestion, warm foods, as much as rest as, the, as you can, and at the same time to honour the fact that you deserve to be nourished as you are the nourishers and mothers of the world. I should say fathers as well because there are some male nurses. Thank you so much. Please give Helen a big round of applause. Thank you, Neil. We'll see you very, very soon. Excellent. So just in summary, we could say that cuffers break the world records for sleeping in. Pitters break a world record for looking into the cells in the mirror. And Vardas just break wind. Okay. So we said that was a really short little snapshot. What I want to do, I'm always really concerned that we give you resources to go away with. If you're interested in that, I hope you agree that it's really a fascinating science. Okay, just to give you a bit of a, an insight into how transformational it can be in terms of your diet and routine to get you back into balance if you experience any of these types of symptoms. So to do that, we've got a um, article on my website that you're more than welcome to go to. I mentioned for shift workers earlier, there's a resource, how you organise all these daily routine things that we started off the session with. How do you put them into a shift work scenario? So the website is markbun.com.au forward slash shift work and that will tell you how to do that around a shift work scenario that you need to do. Okay. Also at the end of the session we're going to be some little clipboards out near our table while you're having lunch that will have a whole bunch of free resources with it. So we'll have little handouts about these doshas, little quick reference things that you can know how to balance each of the three really, really quickly. What are the four or five key things you can do to balance each one or get your partner to do or your friends and that sort of thing. Okay, so there are a whole bunch of free resources. So look for clipboards that are circulating when you go out for lunch. Also, we're going to have a special deal for um, you as nurses and that's what we call our or my year-round health and well-being program. So it's a 12-month program. It's an online program where each week there's a really short tip about how to stay in balance in terms of basically vata, pitta, kapha, earthy, fiery and water. Because with the seasons, these things all change. So the ancients always understood that it's not only daily routines, but there are seasonal routines. The foods we eat, the exercise we do, the types of drinks we have and the work we do changes with the seasons. Summer, fiery, winter, airy, vata. And so this program will really help you to do it. So basically we're almost giving you that program for free. We've got a little special package um, that we're doing for $47, which is two copies of the book. So all the stuff we spoke about earlier in the session around the daily routine very, very quickly, um, the light dinners and the earthing and the sunlight and all the emotional health, all those sort of things. So two books plus the whole 12-month program for 47 If you just want to get one book, you want to get an e-book for $15, you want to get an audio book, you want to get anything else, um, all that's available too. Um, and you just need to look for a little order form that a couple of people will hand out as you're walking out to lunch. Just grab one of those and it'll have everything on it um, with all the discounts and things. The only thing we do ask is that our FPOS machine is uh, not available. So if you want to pay credit card, that's absolutely fine, but we just have to go back 10 years to the old filling out the form. So grab a form and just fill that out. If you can pay with cash, that's um, an absolute bonus. There's an ATM, I think, out there somewhere. So anything like that we can help with, we'd love to. I'm um, happy to answer questions, come and have a chat to us. Any free resources we can give you if you want to email me about something, totally, totally happy to do it because I absolutely love what you do. And I do want to finish with one just final little point to hopefully bring things into perspective and just make things really, really simple. And that is the real fundamental ancient wisdom that if all this stuff in your life gets so confusing... They tell us that there is one thing we can do to know for absolute certainty what we need to stay healthy and balanced in life. And it's what you as females are far better than us blokes at doing. And that is just turning within and what we call trusting the inner wisdom. Because that silent little part of ourselves, that intuition, that gut feeling that as nurses you have and you often use it with your patients and your families is the absolute key to your own health and well-being. So if any of this stuff gets confusing or complicated, 
We're happy to give you resources, but at the end of the day, the best thing you have is that little silent, quiet mind in self because our bodies are infinitely intelligent. The ancient sages, the masters always said, we go within, that little silent space, and everything will be revealed. So I thank you. I thank you for everything you do each and every day and each and every week in your work for caring for others. And I hope there's been one or two little things today that hopefully will help you also care for the most important person in your life, and that's yourself. Thank you very much. Have a good lunch, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.